everybody! Hey everyone, it's me, Christina Alabato. Back? What? Nothing, I'm just so happy to be here. Uh, <laughs> I have not asked you if you're happy to be here or not yet. It's me, Christina Alabato. Gretchen Wieners and Mean Girls on Broadway here for my first ever in person. Why don't you actually get down and like pop up when I say that it's you? <laughs> it's me, Christina Alabato, Gretchen Wieners and Mean Girls on Broadway here for my first ever in person interview with the one and only Bob Lindsay. Hey, everybody. I just happened to be here. Oh my God, Bob, welcome! Wow, what a, oh no. <laughs> okay, my shrine to Bob's career has just fallen. They get it. No, no. No, 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 no. Okay, I just can't like thrash about. Okay. No, you're gonna break everything. But you can't, t you, if you breathe on it, it'll fall. Okay, we're not gonna breathe. <gasps> All right. Anyway, I'm here interviewing my husband, Bob Lindsay, all about his life. And I've written a bunch of questions and he doesn't even know what this interview is going to be about. It's nope. going to be pretty basic, but I'm so excited for you all to get to know Bob because he's the best. Um, and this is my first in-person interview. I'm like a little bit nervous. Really? Yeah. But we're here in our home, a very comfortable place. We live together because we're married. <laughs> Let's do it. Bob, okay. welcome to my show. Well, welcome to my home. Wow. Thank you for having me, YouTube. <laughs> How do, okay, we're interviewing. Wow, your like eyes are piercing into my soul. And I came with all my Bob paraphernalia, including DVDs that he's been in, musicals that he has starred in on their cast album. Um, I'm wearing his South Pacific shirt, and I was going to wear his Village Opening Night cap mm. on my head, but I couldn't find it. Are you going to show everybody our bedroom that you ripped apart to try to find this hat that I don't think is in this house? No, but Probably I found all our old dance shoes collecting dust because neither of us are dancers. Weird. Welcome to my interview, Bob! Hello, my Hello. name's Christina. Um, Hello, Christina. I'm your wife. Nice to meet you. I feel like, I feel a little, like I need a microphone. You like, need more space? No, I'm fine. Let me turn a little bit. Ow. Okay. It's, it's tight over here. Let's just, let's just chat a little bit. Can you take us back? I would love to, like, where were you born and raised? Tell everybody watching. Give us, like, your little, like... Baby Bob story. Okay, I don't. Uh, I don't really remember too many details, <laughs> but I was born. I've been told I was born um, yeah. in Chicago, Illinois. I don't have any specific memories of being, being a, a couple baby. hours old. But <laughs> no, so we moved to Bucks County, Pennsylvania, um, where the Bucks County Playhouse is for any theater people, uh, which is just outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. and that's where I grew up. Am I too close to you? I, don't, I think we have no choice with the framing. We need it to be a little bit, it looks like we have a little bit of room. All right, you can much. lean into if you want. Thank you so much. So, um, <laughs> okay, so you went to Philly. We moved to Philadelphia. In, um, in the all right, 90s. so baby Bob is now in Philadelphia when he's eight. Your journey to theater and singing, and now I'm trying to get serious. Hmm. Went, like, what... You kind of went from sports to theater, right? And when did you start singing and why did you start yeah, singing? Yeah, I always like, I mean, I was always a creative kid. I liked writing was probably my first love. I didn't really know what theater was till later. We did see uh, Beauty and the Beast in whatever year it came out in 1994 mm -hmm. at the Lundfontein um, Theater. What foreshadowing? I remember not wanting to go and then loving it once we got there. Oh. Um, but I didn't do theater. I did theater in middle school. My my middle school history teacher did the musicals. Oh. And he had recruited me to be in Damn Yankees. And that was the first time I was on stage. That was my first time on stage, too. Oh, that's right. I was singing girl, too. Who were you? I was the the owner of the team, Mr. Welch. Oh. Did, did he pluck yeah, you out of sports? Yeah. Remind my me. teacher, Mr. Hallman, he... Uh, <laughs> I think he knew I liked to write. So I think it, that's how he... He poached you? He poached me and was encouraging me to write like plays and things and then he asked me to be in the mm. show because you know they need guys um, usually in the in the middle school musical. What sports were you playing? Sporty oh, guy. Soccer, basketball, I ran track. Goal! Is that a sports thing? That's a soccer thing, okay. yeah. Yes. That's like, yeah. Goal! Don't people do that? The Goal! Not quite as well as you do it, but people do try to do something like that. Okay, so okay. soccer, what else did you say? Soccer. What, you couldn't hear me over your commentary? Um, so, uh, going through like high school, I mean, 
I think it's still fascinating, and I actually really mean this. Bob went to school, a high school in Philadelphia that a lot of Broadway performers came out of, and he was the same year and starred in all the shows in high school with Christy Altamar, which still blows my mind because I did Spring Awakening with Christy. I've known Christy forever before I even knew Bob, which is crazy. That's true. But do you have, does that ever blow your mind? Uh, the two of it you is. I mean, it, it's weird. It is weird. It was just a public high school um, that happened to have a good theater sort of stretch. Yeah, there was there Marla? Marla Mindell and Cinderella and South Pacific with me. Yeah. Uh, she was in... Uh, Sister Act, of course. Just what are some of the roles you and Christy did? I have one of your DVDs right here. Don't fall. <laughs> oh, I'm so shocked. You had it so well set up. Um, this is Christy and Bob in the last five years. This was our, this was, I think, um, this might have been our senior year. In eighth grade, we did Big the Musical. I'm stand this. In ninth grade, we did, eighth grade, we did Big the Musical. In ninth grade, we did ninth South grade. Pacific. In 10th grade, we did Sound of Music. In 11th grade, we did Camelot. In 12th, Merrily We Roll Along. We also did Blood Brothers. And you guys always played opposite each other. I just think that's such a cool thing that was um, out of high school. Wait, so now, so you're in high school, you're doing all this theater. You and Christy are falling in love on stage, which I love. Just little baby Christy and little baby Bob. When and how did you end up getting your manager, who you're still with, and who ended up starting your film and TV career, which is some of your first professional stuff was film and yeah, TV versus yeah. musical. Yeah, actually Christy and, I, Christy and I Christy and I took a act an acting class in Philadelphia and that's where we oh. both are we're with our, the same manager dad actually is now and we're not young anymore. Wow, and so how old were you when you got your manager? Like, probably like 16 or something. Walk us through, like what was your first professional experience? Yeah, I did a production of The Fantastics oh, you did? in high school. Were you Matt? Yeah, who else would I have been? I don't know. The other guy? What's the other guy? No, it was like a, with adults. Oh. Uh, yes. No, it wasn't. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, uh, I auditioned for the Fantastics in high school, and I really wanted Louisa, and I never got it, and I cried. And then you... But I did, yeah, so I, I auditioned Philly. for some things, like movies that would be local, so like... M. Night Shyamalan's The Village, who is famously uh, from Philadelphia and does all of his stuff in Philadelphia. That's pretty cool. And, and so it was just an audition that your manager had gotten you when you were in high school? Yes, school? and I auditioned for a different part, but I didn't get it, but I had an amazing audition, and he really took to me, and then he put me in this movie in a little part, that's and so that's cool. how we became friends. So that was your first sort of, like, did you, at that age, were you surprised that you were auditioning for movies? and Because in, in high school, right, everybody, like... We do theater. There's not a lot of like TV and film work in high school. We're doing our shows no, on stage. So yeah. were you surprised that you were in yeah, a movie? Yeah, of course. That, of course. But I was like, even by that point, I was really like uh, honed in on this as my like... Musical theater in general or acting? No, just acting. Acting in general. Cool. But theater, theater being a big part of it. But I was pretty like, yeah, this is I think what I want to do for a living. From there, now we're going into... Car Bob went to Carnegie Mellon um, for... Musical theater, right? Is uh, that... I was a musical theater. Yes, I have a BFA in acting, but I was one of the musical theater students. Throughout your time there, you were still working, right? You were doing like, were you some of these movies? A little that you bit, did? yeah. Like especially like in the summers. Uh, yeah, that was. When did you do this film? One of my uh, favorites. The happening yeah. was. I think that was. Probably the doing? summer before my senior year. Of, of college. Of college. Gotcha. There's a great scene in this movie. It's the opening scene of the movie. So you almost could use, the opening. Almost the opening scene. It's him and Mark Wahlberg. It's really cute. It's, you're so cute. In I don't it. know if I would describe it as cute. It but, is. You're uh -oh. so sweet. You're such a little baby. Anyway, this movie's also really creepy. Um... Okay, so where have gone off the rails? I don't where know, are we? The happening DVD. <laughs> okay, so you're That's at Carnegie way later. Mellon. Are you, I know. Are you <laughs> Sorry, that? I don't know. We're at Carnegie Mellon now. Let's speed this up. You're in Carnegie Mellon. You're in your senior year. You've been thriving in Carnegie Mellon. You're loving it. You do you, do you love it? I, I really did like it yeah. actually. I had a really good time. Um, and then you auditioned for South Pacific, your yeah, senior so year. Yeah, so I was my senior year. By like October, I found out that I was asked to be a part of the show, uh, which, but it started rehearsals in January. So in the middle of your senior year. In the middle year. of my senior year. Oh my God, so... at Carnegie Mellon's, like you don't want to not get that degree. It is very fancy to go to Carnegie Mellon. Is it? 
I think. Does it make you talk like that? I went to Carnegie Mellon. Anyways, that's, thank you. Carnegie that. Mellors. But luckily the school worked it out. They let me graduate and I moved to New York basically in January. Um, yeah. Were you nervous when you were auditioning for that during college? Like, did it go through your head? Like, oh my God, am I, is this going to happen for me? I remember, I remember to... being, well, you know, it's one of those things where sure, I guess I was nervous, but it seems so not attainable in a way that make it kind of makes you not quite as nervous. I remember being really nervous for the uh, my like final dance call when it became apparent that like this actually could possibly happen, and that's what I remember being nervous because mm -hmm. I'm not really a dancer, and it, which worked in my favor for this particular production. Do you but remember I, the dance to "There Is Nothing Like a Dame"? Ooh, that Whoa, was good vibrato. Really? I don't use a lot of vibrato in my life. That kind of felt. Uh, Amazing, my bones are um, like... If you've seen that production, I know it was on PBS. The, the dancing consists of like walking on the beat, you know, so. <laughs> he did all right. I can handle that. He got the job. Um, amazing. And you did that for two years. You graduated during the time. Did they get, send you like a cap and gown and stuff? No, but I mean, I have my degree, but of at course. the theater the day of my graduation, which was so like in May, they had like a boom box and they played that song that they played. What is that song? Da, 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 da. Yeah. And Bart Cher, the director, gave me a fake degree and I had to make a little speech. But it was sweet. Oh it was gosh. like before a matinee. So that was Bob's journey to Broadway. And since then, you've done all types of fun things like that I have all around here. Obviously, your claim to fame in my book and in many's is Bob played Miles Tuck in Tuck Everlasting. Truly one of my favorite shows ever. Really? Time, the track on um, the cast album. This was in 2000, what year? 2016. 2016. This is called a CD, if anybody <laughs> that has never... Yeah, well, this musical I saw so many times over Bob's like lifetime of doing it, including when he did it in um, Right, we did Atlanta. Our, our, our Out of Town was in Atlanta, Georgia, at the Alliance Theater. You saw it there a couple times? Truly, like, one of my favorite shows. I think it was so... Um, like, it wasn't recognized in the way that it should have been, in my opinion. I think it was such a beautiful show about life, and um, the performances were amazing in it, and Bob's song, Time, was like literally one of my favorite songs I've ever heard anybody perform, and obviously I'm biased, but like, it was such a beautiful performance, I'm serious. I cried every single time I saw it, and the ballet at the end of Tech Everlasting, to me, is one of the most genius things I've ever seen. Casey Nicola, shout out, Mean Girls director, Tech Everlasting director, all the directors of the world. Mm -hmm. Not, but yeah. okay. How was that experience for you? It was your first principal on a Broadway stage. Yeah, right? well, yes, absolutely. Uh, first time, uh, uh, at least on Broadway, originating a part, which always is kind of, it's one of those big bucket list things you can check off your list um, yes. for sure. So that was amazing. I mean, they, you know, when you originate a part, at least in this show, Casey and the writers were very, very collaborative, and like you feel like you have a hand in shaping. Not only like the actual lines you say, but helping pick the right keys and the, like how you're going to sing the songs and everything. You feel like you really get to sort of help make it. I think Which that's is, really special. That's pretty special. And I think it's powerful because like, you know, even though the show didn't last that long on Broadway and any of the shows on Broadway that don't last, um, you know, years and years... There are so many schools that do Tuck Everlasting that are like learning the show and doing it in their schools and yeah. reach out to you about playing Miles. And like that to me is the power of what we do is that you all get to do it. And I think that's right. amazing that people... Well, right. And that's what's... But that's what's special about theater in general is that there is no definitive version. You end up becoming this, you know, you're connected to this long line of, of a play. And like I am, you know, I am not Miles. I maybe was lucky enough to originate it, but... Everybody that does it after me, like, we're all connected, um, which is pretty cool to think about. And then, you know, bringing us up, I know you've done all types of off-Broadway shows in your life in New York. You've been on all types of sets. You've done TV and films and Broadway shows and regional shows. Um, landing you, the last thing you were up to before the pandemic was Tina Turner in, at the Lunt Fontaine. Um which you had just been doing for like six months before the pandemic. Yeah, we opened struck. in in November, and we yeah we uh, shut down in March like everybody else. Yeah, I think that's um, for the best. Shows a lot of fun. Uh, people seem to really like it. There's some uh, amazing performances in it. Bob and, wears uh, some amazing wigs in I it. I do get to wear some wigs, um, which make me laugh. I love a wig. And this is a great show, so I can't wait for this to come back. Your third Broadway show, which is mm -hmm. so cool. Okay, so now I'm going to do a couple questions, like interview questions, and then we're going to do rapid fire Q&A, and then we're done. 
So oh, okay. this looks like a complete nightmare. Maybe we'll just clear the props. Or you can hold that if you want. How's quarantine going for you? It's great. <laughs> ah, have I made you lose your mind? Uh, quarantine's fine. Quarantine's good. I miss performing every night, absolutely. But it's nice to have dinner with you instead every night. So, you know. That's sweet. You try to make the best of, you know, your situation and you sort of focus on uh, controlling what you can control and not worrying about the things you don't. So it's going pretty good overall. He cooks me a lot of awesome dinners. Um, what, do you have any advice that you would have given your younger self? There's this weird balance of like wanting so badly to be good at something. And I would encourage my younger self not to, to lose sight of that. But, um, especially in the arts, getting rid of my sort of student brain quicker, as quickly as I could, not in the sense of like not wanting to learn things, always wanting to learn and experience and soak up all the, as much information as you can, but being able to sort of let that go and just sort of having a sense of um, like fun and adventure and playfulness doing the work. This seems so obvious, but we're just pretending that this is actually happening to us <laughs> and sort of constantly reminding myself that instead of trying to like sound perfect or you know say something clearly and well whatever whatever you know silly thing we put in our brain that we have to so do. like soaking up all the things you learned but then kind of letting them all go if you weren't an actor do you have what are your other interests like what do you think you would do oh man i have no idea i think i'd like to still be creative in some way maybe i'd be a writer or something that was mm. sort of my first love um, I mean, I like, I like the idea of being a teacher too, but I don't know what I would teach if I teach acting, if I teach something else. But, Bob uh, could teach how to be calm. You think so? Because he's very calm. He helps me be calmer. Uh, best, um, best advice anyone has given you in your life as an actor. I feel like you always tell me, Vicki Clark gave best really advi advice. What did she say? Save, I think she told me to save my money. <laughs> that was pretty advice. good advice. <laughs> Um, among many other among things, many other wonderful but, uh, that, w that was always good advice, which is true. That seems like not like the sexiest advice I've ever No, but it's I'm important thinking. as an actor, all you actors watching this, like, you know, we, what we do is for better or for worse, like we can't plan how it's going to go. And mm -hmm. even all these amazing things that we just talked about happened for Bob and happened for me and successful actors, there's a lot of downtime in between there too. And so oh, the saving sure. money thing isn't even about like save your money. It's really like save your money so that you don't panic between Tuck Everlasting and Tina Turner because that can be a lot of time. And that doesn't make you less or more successful. It actually makes you smart and forward thinking and I always talk about this we talk about this it's not the short game it's the long game and what mm, we're doing yeah so course. I'm thinking even though I we want to stay in the moment I'm thinking how do I sustain myself for the next 30 years mm. um so that's sort of I think that's great advice yeah. so let's do rapid fire questions oh, ready you fire. have to just answer the first thing that comes to your head go all right here we go favorite musical South Pacific really I don't know I don't know Sunday in the Park with George okay favorite candy Twix coffee or tea Coffee. Bordeaux or Burgundy? Burgundy, if I could afford it. Lake or ocean? Lake or, oh, ocean. What are we making for dinner? What's in the fridge? Turkey burgers? Sure, okay. why not? Favorite yeah. book? <laughs> <laughs> My favorite book, uh, The Success Principles. Oh, um, do you like driving? Yeah. Great, that's a trick question because he has to drive everywhere because I don't like driving. Well, we barely drive, but we've been driving a lot more this saying. year. Yeah. Okay, ready? As fast as humanly possible. Oh, boy. Name every single Stephen Sondheim show. Go. Company, Sweeney Todd, Sunday, Night Music, Roadshow, Assassins, Passion, uh, Funny Thing Happened in the Way of the Forum, The Frogs. Do you know how many there are? No. I oh, okay. <laughs> I, I miss so many. Anyone can whistle. Follies. That was pretty good. Was pretty I just good? want to see how many you could name quickly. I'm sure there's five million other ones. Evening Primrose. That's a TV oh. play, tele right. teleplay thing. But uh, we'll allow it. West Side Story. Well, that was just lyrics now. West Side Story and Gypsy. I didn't know if that counted. I was. Gonna, I would count that. Just... Anyway, Bob, is there anything else you want to chat about? I mean, this is pretty good. I hope it was good. I don't know. I've never been interviewed on YouTube before. I wasn't sure if I brought cool. enough flavor to the party. But you brought so much flavor to the party. I hope I did too. Anyway, everybody, thank you so much for hanging out. You know. Wait, let's try it again. Bob, thank you so much.
So that was Bob, and uh, if you haven't heard him in Tech Everlasting or seen him in these films or other um, shows, check them out because they're awesome. Cue Alex music. Go music. What? Your brother's theme song. <gasps> oh, my song. brother's music because he writes the music. Yes, cue Alex music. Da -na 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 -na. Thanks everybody for being here and watch my YouTube um, interview with my husband, Bob Lindsay, my favorite person in the whole wide world. I love you. I love you. Thanks, Thanks for, for being having on this me. interview. Like, subscribe, and share this video if you had a fun time, and even if you didn't, I don't care because I love this guy. Wow. Um, Anyway, thanks everyone for hanging out with me. Thanks everybody. See you later. See you later.